What's happening guys? Welcome to another episode. I hope you guys are all doing good. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Milan and in today's video we're going to be working on my cord. So if you guys are familiar with the channel and you guys have seen a couple videos lately, you'll, you would have known that I am working on my K24 engine that's found not inside this engine bay, but another engine that's going to be going inside that engine bay. So it's pretty much summer, you know, kind of. The warm weather is rolling around the corner. I don't need my snow tires on the car and this car is my daily. So this thing has seen, it's seen salt, it's seen snow, it's seen a whole bunch of harsh environments and I wanna kinda of bring it back to life a little bit. So in today's video, we're gonna be spring cleaning the Z. I've got my uh, summer wheels and tires to put on, I have the car to detail and I'm gonna be bringing you guys along with me for this whole process. Let's get started. I used to make videos for you guys a while back regarding all the different ways you can detail your car. I've gone over countless different topics like washing, claying, polishing, interior detailing, and so much more. Now I'm not gonna lie, I miss it. There's some good satisfaction and pride that comes from taking something dull and making it shine. In this video, I'm gonna be giving my Accord some much needed love. It's been a couple years since I've given her a proper detail and that's about to change. This is my daily driver. I've driven it through some terrible snowstorms, the heat of the summer, and the tack just keeps on climbing. Considering I drive this car here the most, I figured it would make the most sense to build an engine for this vehicle. Now at the same time, why can't I make the car look pretty too? When this was my only car, I gave it all of my attention, but as I've acquired a couple more, this one has been kind of been put on the back burner. Now that's about to change. In this video, I'll be finally giving the Accord the detail it deserves. If you're looking for the best possible clean, you'll want to do a wheel off detail. That involves raising your car in the air, supporting the weight of the car by the pinch welds on jack stands, which will then allow you to remove each one of the wheels. By doing that, you'll be able to properly clean the wheel wells, the suspension components, and also the backside of the wheel. If you're mechanically inclined, you can also inspect the brakes and suspension to see if anything's worn or needs replacing. With the car in the air, you can then do a quick once over to see what areas of the car need a little bit more love than others. Since there's been ongoing road work on my street for nearly a year now, my car has been exposed to more dirt and mud than normal. It also means that any salt that was on the underbody of the car that got covered by the dirt has been more destructive than normal. If you have a car that doesn't necessarily look good, it doesn't mean you can't restore it and take care of it. You can see how unforgiving the Canadian winters are and how it's taken a toll on my vehicle. This rust isn't exactly pretty. To begin with the detail, spray down your entire vehicle, the wheel wells, and the body with a soap solution. I have some car soap diluted in a foam cannon attached to my pressure washer, which will allow the soap solution to break down the dirt and salt before I go ahead and agitate it with a brush or mitt. I would typically use a soap that produces more suds for the paint if the exterior has a lot of large dirt on it, but considering it's all basically at the bottom side of the car and on the underside, a more diluted soap formula will do the trick. Any salt from the winter that's still on your car during the summer months will actually corrode faster during the summer than winter. You essentially want to dissolve and wash away any remaining salt from the body. Oil spraying the bottom side of your car isn't a half bad idea too, but that's going to be for a later DIY. Let the soap solution sit on the car for a couple of minutes to allow the soap to really penetrate into the filth. Then, working from the top down, rinse down the car with the same pressure washer, but without the foam cannon attachment. This will rinse off all of the larger dirt, leaves, or anything else that's on the paint. You can also pick up one of these under vehicle sprayers that will rinse down the entire bottom side of the car, which is something that pretty much you would only see at an automatic car wash. With all the soap rinsed away, you can then see all the crap that's come off my car. And to think, that's only the larger things, not even including the stuff that's really found in the suspension and wheel well area. All the salt and light dirt has rinsed away and dissolved into this soapy water solution. With the foam cannon and a detailing brush, spray down each of the wheel wells and scrub away any of the crap that's in there. The wheel well areas are by far the dirtiest place on the car since that's where the wheels are. Any snow, slush, mud, or dirt will get splashed up and hit the body of the car. Take your time with cleaning out this area rather well. You can also use a degreaser if you have any oil-based products that have been adhered to the wheel well area. Grab the pressure washer and rinse away the now dirty soap. Using the foam cannon once more, spray down the entire vehicle so that we can wipe each one of the panels of the remaining filth that simply won't just rinse away. I would typically spray soap in front of the wash mitt so that the mitt literally glides over the paint. That would give the safest clean possible, but since this isn't a regular maintenance wash, I know I'll be polishing the car following this decontamination. After every couple wipes, you can see I'm washing out the mitt to clean it out of the filth. Working from the top down, give the entire body a clean. That includes the windshield, the hood, 
the fenders, and anything and everything that has paint. Now, if I were to go ahead and do the same wash during the middle months of the summer, I would be extra careful around the front bumper, mirror, and windshield for bugs. Any of the vertical areas will be plastered in them, so any hard shells that they have will scratch the paint if you aren't being careful. Follow it up by rinsing the car. Next up comes removing the contaminants that are adhered to the paint. Using a piece of clay and some type of lubricant, it will allow you to shave away any of the stuck on dirt or road fallout. I'm using here a clay bar from Meguiar's with their all-purpose cleaner diluted 10 to 1 in a portable sprayer. Back when my little brother had his old Mark IV Golf, he thought it'd be a great idea to paint his wheels with black spray paint literally right next to the Accord. Well, the paint on my car now has overspray all over it. Almost all the vertical panels have a rough feel to them, and the same thing goes for the panels found on the driver's side front of the car. Use the clay piece in only straight passes, nothing circular, and use a detailing spray or all-purpose cleaner like I am using as a lubricant so that the clay glides over the paint. Nearly an hour later, after claying the entire car, rinse down all the panels and dry them. The paint should look a lot better as all the contaminants won't distort the paint's clarity. The next step is going to be refining the paint. Now I'm going to be doing a small test area here to ensure that the paint will come back to life using the steps that I'm going to be doing. I'm using a Roops 21mm random orbital polisher with a Meguiar's microfiber polishing pad paired with Meguiar's M205 polishing compound. I also guilted my brother into helping me detail my car since it's kind of his fault as to why the car got to this condition. Anyways, you can see the fender and the top portion of the door look incredible as you can actually see the metallic sparkle in the paint. The lighter hazy lower area of the door is like this because it's only been cut with the microfiber pad and the polish and it hasn't been followed up like the top portion of the door with a foam pad and that same M205 polish. The difference is night and day. So to give you an idea as to how simple this paint correction process is, Luke and I are going to show you a nice 50-50 for the difference of before and after. So both sides have been cleaned and clayed. You can see that there's a bunch of scratches on both sides of the tape. Starting off with a microfiber polishing pad and the M205, you want to do overlapping passes until the larger scratches are gone. After 60 seconds or so of polishing and buffing this area with the microfiber towel, you can see these results are crazy. You can see that the sparkle in the paint is more noticeable where all that you would notice before is the scratches. You wouldn't really see much clarity out of the reflection. Following that, we switch to a Meguiar's foam polishing pad with a couple dots of the M205 on a pre-primed pad. Just like before, you want to do the same overlapping technique to ensure everything gets polished at the same rate. After another minute of polishing, you can see how crystal clear the paint is. It's insane this difference if you guys ask me. If you really inspect the final product, you can see that there's a couple very fine scratches still in the paint. However, those were pretty deep before to begin with, and I am more than okay with these 95% better results. If you're trying to chase 100% perfection on a daily driver, you're not only going to spend a lot of time correcting the paint, but you can actually remove a good amount of the clear coat, which means you won't be able to do this process too many more times. It means that a repaint might be in the near future instead of another polish. Regardless, this finish is worlds better now than how it was before. So Luke and I are going to continue repeating these steps to the entire vehicle until we see those same results. I recently bought this small Roops polisher that has multiple sized heads along with multiple smaller pads. For some of the smaller, more intricate areas of the car, like interior trim pieces or door jams, and in the exterior parts like door handles, mirrors, and edges of body panels, this little thing comes in super handy. This is just one of the smaller, more expensive tools that you can use to restore some of those small details in the paint. This isn't something that everyone's going to have, but if you're really chasing those perfection results, this is a must. With the car as restored as it is, with its super glossy paint, look at the camera's struggle to keep the panel in focus. To protect the finish, you can use a couple different products. Ceramic coatings are going to be the most durable and longest lasting way to keep the paint looking like new. This coating here is from Sea Quartz, and it's relatively cheap, long lasting, easy to apply, and I've featured it on the channel countless times. In short, you want to apply a little bit of this product to a suede applicator pad, cover your entire panel with it, and then buff it out. Now don't let it sit on the panel for more than 5 minutes because at that point it's going to be very hard to remove the excess since it's going to be pretty much cured. This here is what it should look like with it all complete. With the ceramic coating more than 24 hours old, you can go one step further and apply a wax to give it the best possible shine. But even without it, you'll have much better results when you look at the reflection and it's going to look like you're looking at glass. Since I won't be needing my wheels and tires until next year, I can switch them out for my new wheel and tire setup that I scooped up. These are 18 by 9.5 plus 27 NK NTO3s. They're super lightweight, 
big brake kit friendly, and they have two 5535 R18 Toyo Proxy R1Rs wrapped on all four corners. This should be more than good enough for the street. With my hub-centric rings installed in the center bore of each wheel, it's time to mount them. Since I have ARP extended studs in the car with open-ended lug nuts, I can pretty much run any spec wheel and tire, and I won't really have to worry about running spacers. This right here is a square setup, so all four wheels and tires are the same spec. Now if my math is right, the rear wheels will be perfect spec, but the fronts will have a little bit of poke. That's including the pulled and front fenders that I'm rocking up front. Now this car for sure does not have the same wheel and tire space as my Z. I can throw 10 and a half inch wide wheels on all four corners, but the Accord struggles to run even nines. Now I don't know about you guys, but I'm a sucker for a black car with silver wheels. I love the contrast. It doesn't matter if we're inside or out, I think it always looks good. You guys tell me, what do you think? That is what I miss more than having a clean car, the grip. When you guys go from a winter setup to a summer setup, if you guys have something sticky, you're gonna have every single driving characteristic improve. The braking, the acceleration, the handling, all of that is going to be better. That is probably what I miss the most about this car. Now, on another note, the way the car looks, it hasn't looked this good in years, in years and years and years, and I miss it so much. If you guys have a car that, let's say, has a couple bumps and bruises here and there, you know, it's got some rock chips on the front bumper, it's got a rust spot in the rear quarter, you can still make it look really good if you put a little bit of work and effort into it. You don't have to own a really expensive car to at least make it look that way. If you guys have a cheaper car, if you take care of it, you'll make it look nice. And even just washing it alone and detailing it, it makes a cheap car look like it's an expensive car. It's sick. Now, if you guys found this video helpful, I really hope you guys can just give it a like or give it a share. Maybe some other buddies of yours are gonna find this video helpful. Maybe they'll learn a thing or two regarding the detailing aspect of it. Now, I know for a fact there's gonna be a bunch of you guys asking about what's happening with the Accord engine. So let me tell you about that right now. So with this whole COVID-19 thing going on, you know, everything has been delayed. I have my engine sent out to my machinist. It's getting a bunch of stuff done. I'm gonna be recording a bunch of the stuff, but they're, they're waiting on a reamer to come in and the shipping is basically delaying the build from getting uh, completed. So um, once that's done, once that's completed, I can get started with working on swapping that engine into this car. Now, another thing. I wanna get the Accord, I wanna get a little baseline for this thing before I go ahead and swap the engine that I have in here for the new one that I have while well, being made. Um, the Accord right now, it makes, I'm guessing, 200 horsepower, maybe at the wheels if I'm lucky, probably not. Um, and I don't really know what kind of time the car right now will do at the racetrack. So given that the track opens up and given that I can get this thing dynoed, I wanna get a baseline and see how much of a difference, let's say that performance gain means in lap time. So if I double the horsepower, am I gonna be getting half the lap time? Probably not, but I just wanna verify that and I wanna bring you guys along with me. Subscribe to find out what that result is gonna be. If you guys have any further questions, comment sections down there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.